Hello, welcome, welcome What The Finances to another episode of the What The Finance podcast, where we talk to experts to help gain a greater understanding about what is happening in the world of finance, investing, and markets. So on today's podcast, I'm happy to welcome Gregory Manorino, who's the Robin Hood of Wall Street and the founder of Trader's Choice. So Gregory, thanks for joining the podcast today. Thanks for having me. Greatly appreciate it. And I think it's going to be a good time. Yeah, looking forward to it. So I guess my first question, uh, what is currently happening in the markets in your eyes? <laughs> like uh, you know it's funny when you start up what's happening uh well let's see let's just line this up right now yeah. number one there's no price discovery at all uh we have a market that's gone wild here uh it's obviously central bank driven there's there's not a sing in my view i mean i'm not joking there's not a single asset class today um that has a real price discovery mechanism behind it central banks have gone wild for years they've gone gone out of their way to create distortions across the spectrum of asset classes like we've never seen before we have uh, hyper bubbles to the upside inverse bubbles to the downside and a whole bunch of other things kind of stuck in some limbo in the middle here and until central banks get out of the way and they're not going to um, you know, this whole thing is going to remain like that until until the inevitable meltdown of the financial system, which I have no doubt we are marching directly into very, very rapidly. Um, it's it's just so obvious to me. And um, at least I hope people are paying attention to what's going on. So what, what would you say is like a price, dis- price discovery mechanism? What is that? Well, when the market itself is allowed to determine via a free market mechanism uh, the price of whatever an asset might be. But when you have collectively central banks here who are doing nothing but vastly inflate the money supply, uh, you know, quantitative easing one, easing two, buying assets across the board, I mean, nothing makes sense. So, you know, with that understanding that, you know, in aggregate, assets are deriving value from debt market action here. Nothing is real. Um, nothing at all. It's it's uh, it's not on the elemental chart. Nothing is anymore. And that's the reason why things are the way that they are. And why things, in my view, are going to get progressively worse moving forward with regard to, well, the economies already around the world is in free fall. Uh, unfortunately, in parts of Europe, it's a lot worse than it is here in the, Uni- the United States. I always tell people, what is the greatest export product of the United States? Well, it's inflation. We're, th- that is it, period, the end. And if the rest of the world is eating it, and at one point, the rest of the world is going to get damn sick of it, uh, at least I would believe so, but that's the way it is for now. So, I mean, that's my take on it. Um, and, and it's just so out of control. So do you buy into the uh, hypothesis, I guess, the last 40 years? Obviously, we've had positive uh, tailwinds, demographics, globalization, et cetera, but also we've had this increase in debt. So do you think these are the main things that have like caused this performance, amazing performance in the stock market that we've seen? Is that sort of your perspective? And it's just gone to the point where we can't keep the debt, in, we can't keep increasing the debt? Well, you know, look, the the debt has been obviously increasing exponentially for years, and that's just the mechanism at its core, how it functions. It can't function without it. It's globally, every developed nation on earth has the same economic model. It's debt-based. And uh, henceforth, why? Uh, The debt keeps inflating with no end in sight. It can't ever stop. Once that mechanism ends, this whole system ends, uh, it demands that more debt be borrowed into existence in greater and greater amounts. And the moment that stops again, this whole thing implodes on itself. So the ramifications of that are pretty pretty simple to see. Uh, obviously, we're seeing inflation skyrocket here. It's getting out of control. Uh, people have been able to cope with it, but it's, it's getting really difficult uh, as of late for the average guy, the average girl to make ends meet. Savings rates around the world are in the negative People continue to borrow beyond their eyeballs just to make ends meet. It's not going to stop. This is deliberate, what we're seeing here. There's no way on this earth or off this earth that central banks could not clearly see what they were doing here. After the last meltdown in 2008, look, what are meltdowns? Meltdowns are when markets just try to correct to fair value. That's really all they are. And what have central banks done collectively with their puppet governments here is uh, reinflate uh, a real estate bubble, a, a stock market bubble. And again, on the back of that, 
distortions across the spe spectrum of asset classes here. So, you know, the, 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 the fact is, is uh, we're seeing this current system burn out. The current system is burning out very rapidly. And, we're, uh, and that's clear, uh, clearly able to see. We, we can see that by inflation surging out of control and central banks who are doing nothing nothing at all to try to, to stop it. Or what, what's the lie that, that's being sold? Okay, we're going to raise rates. We're going to raise rates. It's going to make a difference. No, it's not even meant to do that. Raising rates, the mechanism here is very simple to understand. They're trying to kill demand, slow the economy, and then some kind of mechanism is supposed to occur that's going to slow down inflation. The issue is currency. It's a currency problem. Uh, currencies around the world in free fall, losing uh, purchasing power. It's a money supply problem. What are central banks doing? They continue to balloon their money supply. Um, so they can they can yell and scream from rooftops that they're going to be you know fighting inflation aggressively. It's not done a damn thing. Uh, we've seen it. As a matter of fact, the Federal Reserve's favorite indicator last week just pointed towards inflation is going to continue moving higher. Uh, but the lie is going to continue to be per perpetuated. Oh yeah, it's a rate problem. No, it's not a rate problem at all. It's a currency issue. So say if uh, people got a bit more sense and they made you the Fed chair, what would you change? <laughs> I would end the Fed, okay? <laughs> uh, made me the Fed chair. I don't, we don't need this organization here. It's about time that we freaking take back our system here. Uh, our forefathers would be rolling over in their graves if they saw what was happening here, that we've allowed this private institution to basically take over the entire world. And that's what they're doing here. I wouldn't take the job as the Fed chair for nothing. Uh, I'm not I'm not motivated by money. They couldn't possibly motivate me by offering me any amount of money and happening here. Uh, I believe central banks are public enemy number one, more, none more so than the Federal Reserve. It's a criminal organization, top down, upside down and sideways. Uh, and they're on a mission here along with collectively with other central banks to, to bring the world economy to its knees by any mechanism they want to throw at us here so they can fulfill their end game. And their end game is very simple. They want to be the lenders and buyers of last resort. They want owed it all. They want, you know, look, they already control the economy. They control the financial system. They basically control the world. They're the real government. Everything else is just a side act, a theater. Yeah, that's crazy to think so if we say it's a currency problem then i guess why is it that as you mentioned before the u.s has printed all this money they've done all this qe basically monetary policy um fiscal policy etc but the currency is still very strong is it just that the other countries have done more and they're worse <laughs> well no the currency is not strong it's strong relative to other currencies around the world it's uh, you know look i've been explaining to people for i don't know how many years that central banks are they're, they're, they're deliberately going out of the way to destroy their currency. It's a race to the bottom. Whoever gets their first wins. But, you know, on a relative basis, the, the U.S. dollar remains the, the prettiest bell at the ball. And it's going to stay that way until some other serious action would act against it, with, which would result in, uh, in, in war, in a world war. Uh, not just these regional conflicts that we've been seeing here. You know, we, uh, the Federal Reserve ha has sponsored every single war here. The, the, the petrodollar system assured that the U.S. dollar would achieve reserve status. Uh, and be, with that mechanism in place here, it's very hard to sidestep. And that's why we're seeing the relative strength of the dollar uh, remain high. And it's going to stay that way. But the absolute value of not just the dollar, but all of these central bank issue notes is dissolving. Henceforth, why? We're seeing inflation. It's the, the currency losing purchasing power. They're weakening. But, you know, look, people are not going to be told the truth. They're going to be distracted and deceived and told to look here when they should be looking over there. It's always the same story. It never stops, unfortunately. But that's the way it is. Yeah, if you think about it, the U.S. is the only country that can actually print energy, basically, because energy is based in U.S. dollars, so they can print as much as they want yeah. and buy as yeah. much as they want. Uh, so what's the catalyst? You mentioned there's all these issues, I guess. Is it just it's going that direction? There's nothing stopping it. Do you see a massive event, a catalyst happening? What's your thoughts? Mm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, the big what's what's the biggest issue facing the world right now? It's the global debt bubble. 
Everyone knows that. Uh, at least everyone in the know should know that. It's it's not global warming or even nuclear war. This is the greatest threat to humankind because they're gonna what they're gonna do uh, right now is uh, continue to inflate the debt until that point of what I call maximum saturation, where the system becomes so overwhelmed. And we're already seeing the effects of that, and that is uh, rising inflation here. And it's just a matter of time before it gets out of control now. What eventually is going to occur is very simple in my view. Um, we're going to see massive sell-off in the debt market, which is going to cause bond yields to spike around the world. We've been witnessing a lot of that lately, um, a lot of jawboning by central bankers, uh, Fed leakers, I call uh, like Nick Nick over there, I forget his last name, Oink Man. But, uh, you know, th th there's a mechanism in place right now to try to try to give the resemblance or, uh, of some kind of stability in the debt market. But the fact of the matter is, it's, it's getting out of control. And it's only a matter of time before an implosion occurs in the debt market, which will result in an uncontrolled spiking in bond yields around the world. And you're going to see all the cash bleeding out of the debt market. which is going to put a, a lot of pressure on the stock market as rates rise. And the cash is just going to move from one set of assets into another. It's going to move, in my view, it's going to go into commodities. I've been telling people this uh, literally for a, decade, for a decade. It's going to eventually play out that way. Risk on will become risk off. Uh, cash is going to just leave certain assets, debt, uh, equities, and just go into other things. And then that eventually that cycle will reverse too. But that's how it's going to play out eventually. And there's a lot of effort right now by the Federal Reserve and other central banks to to at least try for now to stabilize the debt market. They're not done. In my view, central banks need to inflate further. They need to create more people that, that are dependent on the system the way it is. Uh, and and they're, they're literally eliminating an entire class of people here worldwide. Uh, the middle class is being systematically and deliberately eliminated. Yeah, well, that's crazy to think. So you think, because in the let's look at UK, where I'm based, so... Bank of England, they basically had to save the bond market to save pension funds from going bust. You think yeah. that's just one? I mean, it's right there. Yeah. Exactly. It's a very, very good example of what we've seen lately. You know, the Bank of England jumped in here with uh, quantitative easing. Then they doubled it. Then they uh, postponed it or stopped it. But what did they do? Now they've increased their repo program. You know, this, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. They, they, they have to get in here and make sure that they're taking some kind of action to trick the debt market into thinking that it's more liquid. I mean, that's really what's behind all of these central banks in their, their uh, repo programs here is they're faking liquidity. They're trying to trick the system in, into believing that it's more liquid than it is. And that's the, really that the, the root cause of the implosion is eventually going to be a lack of liquidity. It's going to dry up. And um, I mean, I'm not the only guy speaking about this. Uh, you got major inst major institutions that are saying the same thing. They're a little late to the party here. I've only been talking about this like forever now, but you know, I guess better late than never. But that's the real issue here. And unfortunately, it, this whole thing is is going to catch people by surprise. They they believe the system is going to continue to function. They don't. They don't take action. And that's really what bothers me. I say, where's the people taking to the streets? When are they going to start doing something? But they're not going to. They never do. They're, they've been lulled into some sense of normalcy in an abnormal world. Um, they're, again, propagandized. They're distracted. I don't know how bad the mainstream media is over on you, uh, your side of the pond. But over here, it's so out of control that you can't get the truth out of anything. It's just some kind of brainwashing, mind twisting mechanism uh, that is, is really taking on some, some new thing to people. It's become their religion and uh, they, they believe it. They believe the stuff that they're told as, as if it's gospel truth, you know, without looking into it, say, hey, hold on a minute here. Is this just for as an example, is this really a rate problem? <laughs> you know, the, what they're selling people right now, oh, they're, the central banks are trying to fix inflation. They're raising rates, but they don't think to themselves, hold on a second. Is this really a rate problem? Or is it something else? Of course, it's something else. It's the distraction. It's rates that's causing the problem. Meanwhile, they've, they've engineered this themselves here. Like I said earlier, is there? And there's no way on this earth or off this earth that these central banks weren't very mindful of what they were doing by inflating the global money supply, by inflating the debt here, by keeping rates artificially suppressed here, you know, reinflating bubbles in, in real estate and in the stock market. And, you know, look, all of this is just in our face, but people don't question it because they don't know any better. And that's really a shame. 
yeah, I think one thing that a lot of us realize is they want this veneer of like people having faith in their institutions. As you said there, you said liquidity. It's not if there's enough liquidity, it's if people have faith that the central bank will come in and, and save them. And, you know, it's same as if they cut rates to increase the equity market in the future, potentially, if they do that pivot. So, but I think people are starting to realize that faith isn't enough. They actually, you know, they're, they're seeing through that and they're seeing, hang on, there's institutional issues behind this, but you're not changing anything that you're doing because you want to keep that veneer of faith. I mean, look, who, who whose interest do central banks actually have in mind? Yours or mine? No, their own interest. And they're, they are going to fulfill their goal. They're fulfilled to fill their goal is to own it all, to be the lenders and buyers of last resort here. And that's exactly what they have become around the world. And it's really a shame as people get crushed and destroyed underneath this thing. And it's only going to get worse here. We're seeing uh, a phenomenon occur and it's accelerating. That is this elimination of the middle class. They're being squashed down to the lower rung of society. Uh, there's no such thing as a ch- as trickle down economics. It always trickles up and it's being forced up. The one and two percenters getting getting richer and richer on off of the back of whatever's left of the middle class. When that's done, when they're finished, like choking people to death and making sure they squat are squashed down to the lower rung of society, more dependent on the system, slaves to the system. That's when we're really going to see this thing get going. When I believe where that implosion in the debt market is going to occur. Central banks are, are, are very crafty. They, 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 they got everything really where they want it. They're pushing the world in, in the direction they want it to go. The population, um, mostly by manipulation of their minds, by not allowing them to know what's happening, by putting some kind of false figure in front of them saying, okay, this is the government. It's not. It, the, king, the world is not run by kings, queens, monarchs, dictators, presidents. You know, it's, it's the banks. And the banks have, have everything in their back pocket right now. The media, um, it's, it's absolutely incredible what we're seeing, but this is nothing new. This is, I believe, something that a lot of people have expected to happen, but took no action against it. I've been speaking out against this very strongly for over an entire decade, and I hope I'm making a difference. I hope people are starting to wake up, but there's not enough. There's not enough people to understand how the system works, why it works, what the end game is. The end game is even bigger than what we even spoke about it, because the issue of the global debt bubble is not just a financial one, it's, it's a resource problem. So again, we're seeing supply chain disruptions, all this minor nonsense with regard to you know COVID be nothing compared to a lockup of the system. We're gonna end up in a liquidity freeze, a freezing up of the system, transactions are gonna stop. That's again, the implosion here in the debt market because the system is debt based. If it can't continue to acquire debt, it stops functioning. Uh, you know, people have the faith that it's gonna function, okay? So what are central banks gonna do? They're gonna uh, issue in a completely new system. So they have to kill this one first. And that's what they're in the middle of right now uh, before they can issue in another system. And it's gonna be one of control, one of a lot of control. But unfortunately, you know, people don't see it. They don't see where we're going. They don't understand what's happening. It's a, it, thank, thank goodness for shows like this. So people can, can hear it. They can get it for themselves. And I, I don't want people to, to listen to a word I'm saying. I want them to research this stuff for themselves. Look into this for themselves. Does it ring true what I'm saying? Um, you know, just let your fingers do the walk. And this stuff here is always hidden in plain sight. The agenda of central banks, what they're trying to do, wh- why they were established. You know, this whole thing, it's now coming to a head. So why would they want to have control? Because I think that's one thing I, I understand. You could say uh, uh, other people in you know, government, but then why would the federal bank want that control? Or they, they, want, together? they want control. Of, well, it sounds like science fiction, right? But they want control is power, power, absolute power. They want control over everything, over the population, whatever's going to be left of it again, when this whole thing does implode. And in order to get that control, we're talking about the ultimate control, they have to have a massive public outcry as, as people become more dependent on the system. Of course, they're going to implode the system that they're running, and then they're going to issue a new one. And hold on a minute, everybody, we have a solution for you. Oh, yes, we do. Here it is. And they're going to issue in what they want. Um, they already have it. It's all ready to go. But it's all about control. Control is power. The more control they have, the more power they can consolidate into fewer, fewer individuals. It's really the truth. The whole world is going to be run by very few, already is, by very few individuals. 
Yeah, my, my concern with like, uh, I guess, predictions like this is that we, a lot of people have been saying this for a long time. A lot of the time it has lost money, uh, which I guess is the challenge. So do you think there's any way that it this might not happen? Is there any way that this- Might not happen? No. Yeah. It's, it's happening right now. It's going on right. I mean, you, if people can't see what's going on, then they're blind. But it's happening right now and it's accelerating. It's getting progressively worse. The lies, the distractions, the propaganda. The, the biggest lie lately to me is how this is all a rate problem with, with global inflation. It's not. Again, it's a currency free fall issue. It's a currency crisis, period. If they could stabilize the currency, which they won't, and they could too. All, all central banks have to do uh, to really fight inflation would be to contract the money supply. And they can contract the money supply by having the major institutions, the major financial institutions, increase their capital reserve requirements to whatever number, contract the money supply, inflation would go away relatively fast. In fact, almost immediately, but no, they're trying to sell the lie and they're pushing it. The more they tell the lie that it's a rate issue, the bit more people are going to buy it. That's people honestly believe this is true, but they don't question the fact that it's central banks who have caused the problem. They are the ones who have kept rates artificially suppressed since the last meltdown here, understanding how this would work. Artificially suppressed rates have unbelievably humongous effects on the markets. It reinflates real estate bubble. It reinflates an equity market bubble. But then again, in the background is, inflation. And once this got started, there's no way to stop it. You see, they could, unless, of course, they dramatically reduce the global money supply, uh, stop spending money, stop calling on their puppet politicians to you know, vote on this act and this policy, whatever it might be, to continue to pull cash into the now from the future. They can't stop it. They can't, they're going to institute everything you can dream about and think about and things we can't even imagine to continue to inflate the money supply, to continue to inflate, because that's the goal of central banks. What people don't know, the biggest secret, the, co the key here to a central bank's power is only one thing. It's their ability to inflate. If we can take that power away from a central bank, we win. If we continue to allow them to inflate, uh, inflate the money supply, inflate the debt, we lose. And they gain power. The, the more debt a central bank is allowed to put into the system, the stronger they become exponentially. And the system demands it to function. That's why eventually this whole thing is going away. And eventually, and we're already seeing the effects of it. In my view, it's happening now. We don't have to wait for it. It's happening now. We got people here, like we said earlier, savings rates in the negative. They're borrowing beyond their eyeballs here. They can't make ends meet. Uh, and this is a global phenomenon. You know, there are those, the well-off and the rich, they couldn't possibly be doing better than they are now. And that it's always the same story. There's always the select few who do really well. Uh, and it's always the ones who have the cash. And everyone else, unfortunately, just goes down the, the rat hole into despair. Yeah, there are definitely a few more tools that they could use. Like um, I've been listening to a few people and they're talking about, you know, we've talked about pension funds before, insurers, these people with massive amounts of capital, they can actually force them to buy, you know, certain percentages, put a certain percentage of that into bonds that's maybe could be a purchaser but you could say as well if they want the debt to continue they could actually government guarantee bank loans to certain industries or even just in general to houses potentially and that could be another way to increase this supply but i think it's just a short-term fix for the issue they're all band-aids they can't fix yeah. it i can't see a real way to fix this issue and I, they don't and they know there's no way out of it yeah sure we could put a band-aid here and a band-aid there and that's what they're doing right now with regard to trying to stabilize the debt market which is the core of this entire thing, um, they're, they're putting band-aids on it, and it's 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 not it's not going to work. Eventually, we're going to get that meltdown. It's going to occur, and it's going to be very dramatic. It's going to change the financial and economic landscape of the world. So let's say so this let's say this does happen. Uh, we're not sure about the time frame, but it, it, in the future, uh, once it does happen, you've mentioned commodities. Are there any other assets that you think could potentially protect people's wealth? In your opinion? Well, you know, yes. Um, you know, I know a lot of people hate to hear me say this, but I do believe that uh, cryptocurrencies are going to benefit here. I think in that kind of an, an, an implosion in the debt market, when cash is seeking alternative places to go, look, people think that, you know, I, I always use the analogy of, of, of cash growing little wings and flying away to money heaven. It doesn't do that. It just moves from one set of assets into another. And yes, I do believe it's going to go into commodities in a big, big way. 
Uh, and I believe it's going to go into cryptocurrencies as well. I think the big ones are going to benefit mostly from this. The ones that have been around for a while, the tried and true ones. Um, you know, but look, putting a timeline on this is very, very difficult, but it's not impossible to do. We got to keep our eyes on a few things. I created an indicator. It's called the MMRI, Manorino Market Risk Indicator. It measures risk in, in the market, in the stock market, based upon the debt market, okay, the driver here. Uh, it's free to anybody who wants it. It's on my website, traderschoice.net. I hope people pay attention to that. When I first put out the MMRI, it was about 80. Right now, we're at just about 300. Above 300, we enter what's called extreme risk. We hit over 300 just two Fridays ago. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it changed when the Fed whisperer, Nick, and the Fed President Mary Daly was floated out to say, oh, come December, the Fed's going to pivot. Like, that's really going to make it. Here's another Band-Aid for you. Okay, yeah. Okay, the market doesn't want to hear that the Fed's raising rates. Okay, whatever. But is it really going to stop the underlying issue here of exploding debt and, and the money supply out of control? No, not at all. But it will make the market happy for a little while. It's another Band-Aid effect. It's, it's, it can't be fixed. There's no way to fix this without dismantling the system. And that's what they're in the middle of doing here uh, and putting in a new one. So what indicate or what inputs go into your uh, sort of indicator? Well, the MMRI is based off of the benchmark 10-year yield. Uh, and the relative dollar strength that's basically at its core. It, it uses this with a little Q mathematical situation and it comes up with a number and that number is color coded. It's been really spot on since the day it came out. I put a lot of thought into it and uh, it's just, it's very simple. And that's the beauty of it, it's simplicity. And, uh, you know, like I said, Red, like today, a 280 on the MMRI. And uh, it's going to go, I mean, could you only imagine how that's going to play out eventually when we get an implosion in the debt market? I mean, it's going to go to who knows where. It, I don't even think there's a top. I mean, it can just, it's going to go stratospheric. Um, but pay attention to these things, people. Look at the 10-year yield. Watch global bond yields. Watch the relative strength of the dollar. Why is the relative strength of the dollar so important? Because it's always the same story. Um, it's, it's, it's the knee-jerk safety reaction uh, that the market always follows every single time, uh, without exception. There is some global or geopolitical event here. What happens? Bang! You see the relative strength of the dollar go up. When you see that, it's a tell. It's a tell. You know, look, the market is a game of incomplete information. Nobody, I don't care who they may be, who they may say they are, has all the answers. It's not, not even me, okay? What we do here people who analyze the markets and everything connected to it is you, you know, like you're playing with this, you're playing with information that's not complete. So what do you got to do? You got to do your best to fill in the holes. Okay. Okay. So you have, let's say you have all this data and it's pointing towards this. And of course it's not going to be obviously, you know, exactly right. So you have to fill in those gaps. You fill in those gaps, you come up with the most likely scenario and you say, okay, based upon what, I'm seeing here, this is what any analyst is going to do because it's a game of incomplete information. Okay. What's the most likely outcomes? How can we fill in these gaps with what makes the most sense? And that's what I do. That's all I do. I look at this stuff. I say, okay, this is what's going on. This is the most likely scenarios. Not right all the time. Nobody can be. It's impossible because that's the other issue is the it's, it's, it's very liquid. It's changing all the time. So sometimes you got to bend your theory a little bit. Okay, hold on a minute. It's going a little bit against what I thought. So now we're going to rethink it. That's what makes this challenging. It, it also, to me, is what makes it interesting. Like if, I, if a, an analyst had all the answers, I think this whole job would be pretty damn boring. Right. But the fact that it, it is a game of incomplete information and you're trying to come up with the most likely scenarios makes it I like look forward to it every day. I say, okay, what's changed? What's going on? What's this? What's going on over there? What's going on over here? I now come up with another scenario and it's always changing. And I, I just love that. It's, you never get bored doing this job. Let me tell you, you never get bored. Yeah, especially what the past few years, so much stuff changing, so much volatility. So Greg, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, I guess my last question is, what is one message you'd like people to take away from the interview? All right, what I've been telling people for the longest time, you know, all this stuff is well and good. You know what our greatest resource is? It's each other. We are our greatest resource. So, you know, stop with the divide and conquer, paying attention to that. You know, love each other, care about each other, be charitable. 
I think if people adopted those kind of just that simple mentality, the whole world would be a better place. Yeah, I, I like that message. So Greg, thanks again. You mentioned Trader's Choice. I know you have a YouTube channel as well. Anywhere else that people can find you? I mean, just Google me. I'm everywhere. You can find me pretty easy. Yeah, awesome. I'll put that all in the description below. So Greg, thanks again. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe and click the bell icon so you are notified when new podcasts are released. I hope you're leaving with some great value about investing, trading, and finance. See you on the next show.